All right. Okay. Um, our meeting is five o'clock. We'll get started with the call to order. Connie Aden. Sajid Garu. Siham Ahmedi. Here. Jennifer Truska. Mikhail Pauling Normandin. Here. Rachel Stone. Here. Deb White. Here. And Tanya Kunza. Um, we'll go ahead with the land acknowledgement. We, the Moorhead Human Rights Commission, collectively and with gratitude, acknowledge the sacred land the city of Moorhead is built upon. We acknowledge the people who have resided here for generations and recognize that the spirit of the Dakota, Ojibwe, and Métis, and all indigenous communities permeate, permeates this land. The contribution of the indigenous people shall not be forgotten, nor will the success that is achieved by the people of the land. We will continue to educate, advocate, honor, and unite for the indigenous people of this land. No. Our third agenda item, any agenda amendments from anyone? Right, and then we will approve the minutes um, before the guest speaker to be able to just transition through that. Madam Chair, I move to approve our minutes from the February 15th, 2023 meeting. I second. Second. <laughs> Did you get it? Okay, then I'll, then I'll motion to approve the um, minutes. Did you say agenda or minutes? Agenda. Okay, minutes. then I'll motion to approve the agenda for t March 15th, 2023. Um, we will, um, any citizens to be heard? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, everyone in favor of the approval of minutes? Aye. Any citizens to be heard? And none. And then I will, um, any law enforcement updates before the guest speaker, seeing as I'm the guest speaker, so we'll just <laughs> transition right along. Uh, Madam Chair, we don't really don't have any new items, just to kind of talk about a little bit. I was going to take a little bit of time to introduce myself since I'm going to be your new uh, representative with the Police Department to the Human Rights Commission. I'm Derek Swenson. I've been with the department um, over 22 years. Uh, I'm very, uh, this, this uh, community has been a part of my life for all of my life. I have uh, parents that uh, my mom grew up in uh, Wolverton, Minnesota, from Belcourt, North Dakota, but grew up in Wolverton, Minnesota, and my dad grew up in rural Kent, and I grew up in uh, Wilkin County for my whole entire life, graduated from Barnesville, graduated uh, college from MSUM. My parents were divorced when I was a, a preteen, and Moorhead was my second home, so uh, my first uh, career was in <coughs> EMS, and I was a paramedic with FM Ambulance prior to joining the Moorhead Police Department. So right now I'm the captain. A lot of my job has to do with project management, special projects. Uh, some of the things we're really focusing on right now is, as uh, Sergeant Martin mentioned when he was with you, that our staffing has always been a significant issue, and I could tell you that every month we could just put that on the agenda that we're probably going to have staffing issues. But part of my job is to try to figure out how to reduce calls for service, especially with those that are maybe frequently frequenting our emergency services. So a lot of my focus right now is trying to find the appropriate response for those in mental health crisis. And uh, also just looking at a lot of uh, different options of people who are using a lot of other services. So those who may be in need of social services more and we're going down the road right now of looking at uh, having a possibly um, hiring a social worker to work actually embedded in our department to try to assist with finding the appropriate services for those who are in need. And the other portion that I, I focus a lot on is our wellness program. So I coordinate our wellness program along with our embedded counselor and uh, work with a lot of different things. So uh, as technology changes, we come up with a lot of different avenues for what offer wellness for our, for our department. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all you do. Any questions for <coughs> Thanks. I just thought, you know, I know we're in a transition, and I just wondered if you'd give us an update on the um, cadet program. I think that's, you know, we've, we've talked about that a lot, that that's one of the um, great initiatives that the Moorhead Police started to, in particular, focus on bringing folks from underrepresented communities, and also any updates on uh, pathways to policing. Yep, thank you. Uh, 
right now we'll be in a transition because our cadets are currently going to be graduating most of them or getting really close to that so hopefully we're going to transition them into officers at one point so again our, our cadet program focuses on uh, students that hopefully will work part-time for us learning the geography learning how to uh, talk to people which is an extremely important piece for our young people right now just communicating with our public and then transitioning them into law enforcement so we are transitioning and looking at that. Uh, our pathways to po uh, policing is exactly uh, what Councilmember White said was regarding uh, trying to focus on those uh, community members that may need some extra assistance in, uh, especially we're focusing on with the, uh, they may not be able to have that financial backing of going into taking eight weeks off to go to Alexandria for skills. So this is a way of us still allowing them to get some payment in there and focusing on those of uh, uh, what we would be the cadets focusing into hopefully becoming members of our department. So specifically that money would be used for people that are coming into our department, not just uh, within that job piece. So very excited about that. We're just working with uh, Zoe with the city to do our second round. We, we have one candidate right now who is, uh, who qualified for that grant and we're looking at our second, hopefully third or fourth as we keep growing. Okay, um, and then um, I will transition to my the guest speaker, which is myself, and thank you. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I'm going to speak about Jean Gian Azadi, which translates to Women, Life, Freedom. And in September, there was a resurgence of this slogan. And I said, I've heard this before. After the murder of Gina M Mesa Amin, we heard this resonate across Iran and the world with protests. Um, so this is very relevant to today. Although the origins of the slogan weren't exactly, um, weren't given credit to. It's, um, it's, a, it's a slogan I heard most of my life being from the region, born in the region, which um, the Middle East. So it, it has a lot of significance. Um, looks like we're having issues with the PowerPoint. Got it. Okay, her name is Gina, and her identity mattered. It mattered because her legal name was forced upon her by the Iranian regime, which would not allow her to use her ethnic name. So people, stories, newspaper reports called her Mesa Amin. And it pained a lot of individuals to see a young lady killed because, quote unquote, her hair was not covered, However, in Iran, other individuals go on with uncovered hair, but they are not murdered or mutilated and tortured like Gina was, who was a 22-year-old 20, from Shazik, a city in uh, Kurdistan province of Iran. Her family called her Gina, meaning life. The Iranian state does not allow its citizens to legally register any names that are not of Persian or Islamic origin. So as a result, she was identified by her state name, which is Mesa Amini. So as you can see, after the incident, there was protest worldwide, and the slogan, ironically, was translated into Persian, and Turkish, and Arabic, all three languages, which are our source of oppression for specific, the Kurdish people and specifically Kurdish women who have struggled for centuries to be liberated and find their freedom and voice. The slogan Jean Gian Azadi is a guide to the people, to the life of women that want, that want to be organized and will become, has become a philosophy for the struggle in the 21st century. 
When Iranian activists and outlets repeated Zan Zangi Azadi, the direct translation of Jean Jian Azadi to Farsi, it pained a lot of individuals that have struggled with the slogan for 40 years. Some would argue that the reason Jean Gina was uh, murdered was because of her identity. Um, in a way, they saw her identification card, they saw she was from this marginalized minority, and that allowed them to execute this brutality on her. Um, for many years, Kurdish women have led the way for a very long, long time and made us realize that there can be no human liberation without the liberation of women around the world. And I think a mindset like that will benefit several um, females, no matter how they identify around the world, no matter how they dress. So this is Gina in a traditional um, dress worn by her um, and her family. Um, for a long time, you know, the, the being a minority has been a struggle in this part of the world, and you put the inter intersectional minority um, female in that scope, and that leads to a lot of difficulty, a lot of things that have to be overcome, and it has been an, a struggle for females to seek that liberation. And in 2014, I think there was another resurgence of this um, slogan, Jean Jian Azadi, with the fight against ISIS in Syria, where a lot of the forces were female that were trying to liberate these cities in Syria. And I think with, and, and it made such an impact because these women were seen as a part of a movement to free their people. Um, so with the 21st century, the, this struggle has been socialized with a butterfly effect. Wherever in the world, we women express ourselves and carry our struggles, sometimes with rebellion, sometimes with songs, sometimes with slogan, sometimes with dance, and sometimes with our haircuts, our hair coverings. I mean, the struggle is also felt in other countries where women are told, don't cover your hair. So, you know, it, the focus on females and their appearance and presence, what they do with the social, um, the social norms of the region they live is so emphasized in a way that it, it really de is detrimental um, to them moving up socially and economically because they have to, they are scrutinized by not only their peers but, but by their society. Um, sometimes the influence is a common struggle and um, the re re a rebellion revolves into a social resistance with the slogan Jean Jian Azadi. Um, but generally, these rebellions and resistance erupt from practices of fascist regimes and the genocides they inflict, because that is where the slogan came from, from regimes that would not allow people to live freely with their own identity. And again, I reiterated that it's a slogan that has four decades of relentless struggle against all forms of authoritarianism, colonialism, um, intervention, and for equality when it came comes to women. Um, so, and it as you could, as you saw, it was translated into Spanish as Mujer Vida Libertad, um, which is the same as a symbol of resistance for females um, struggling in. Um, in many different uh, countries. So if we honor Gina Amini and embrace the true philosophy behind women in life and freedom, we must credit Kurdish women and their forward-thinking contributions to feminism. We can go to the last slide. So how does this relate to our current situation in our society, in the U.S.? Well. I think women, particularly of color, have been criticized often. Often minority women are overlooked, their contributions aren't credited, opportunities are not given. They're, they're told to behave. I mean, just recently, um, if you look at the backlash towards women in office and in power, how they're vil villainized 
and told, you know, behave, don't speak too loud, don't be yourself. So it's very evident that females still have that struggle no matter where they live and what, because of how society identifies and what, they, what is expected of female. There is often different, you know, different, different ways that females are treated based on their minority or marginalized status. So I think um, with March being such a movement for women and for equal pay, for equality, to be able to express and dress the way you um, want, and then at the same time be given the same amount of voice and attention as a majority, um, it's really important to reflect on the slogan, Jean Jian Azadi. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody? Or comments? Beautiful presentation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I, I have a couple questions and comments. Yeah, so I think uh, the stuff that you're saying is so relevant, and I appreciate that you make the comparisons also of things in the United States, because I, you know, um, I think we see similar things where uh, the contributions of BIPOC women, in you know, uh, activists have, you know, um, not gotten representation or the kind of attention or. Like even if you look at like the Black Lives Matter movement was started by yep. three women, and you know we, it, but it's often like that's not how people envision it. Um, I think the other thing that um, you know, like this, I'm glad you brought it out because there's just not enough people talking about what happened to her, and I think um, you know, looking at the way women standing up um, and who are then. Um, uh, you know, victims of political oppression. Um, again, you, we often sort of uh, don't give that sufficient attention. Um, the other thing that I I think about too is even beyond that too is even some of the ways that like sexual violence has been used as a way of uh, you know a form of um, going after whole communities. You know that women are the ones that bear children, and so we've seen that. I think I know for. For instance, in our community, talking to folks from the Yazidi community and some of the ways that, and you mentioned ISIS, use that as a way of, a form of genocide is to, um, is through sexual violence. And so, so many things where gender and is really linked, you know, uh, uh, gender discrimination, gender oppression is really tied in with this. And I think the more we can raise awareness about it, the better. Absolutely. And just empowering women in general to, to have that voice to be through and not forgetting identities matter in these struggles. So whether you identify as black or indigenous, that truly really matters in your struggle. So and in reaching that justice and that empowerment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, and on to our agenda number will be eight, uh, regular business. Any thing? Any, okay. So we'll go on to our subcommittee reports. I have a couple of things uh, related to our subcommittee. So we we'll, we obviously still have to come up with a time to meet. Um, I had a couple of follow-ups from the last meeting. One is, um, Tanya, I sent you our updated, the calendar that we had put together, and I want to make sure you received that, and I think that that, don't we still need to fold that into the report and then vote on it, right? I, I thought so, like the the annual, or no, the plan, not the yes, report, the, right? Yeah, the calendar, I'm sorry. Yeah. Our, yeah, so that gets, full, so the calendar that we put together for 2023 Right. We have to vote on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was asking you earlier. Okay. I, I wasn't. Think we were. Okay. I must have misunderstood. Yeah. I, yeah. So there's two different things. One's a report, and one's the, um, which I think the report we approved. Right. So that's. I think that was okay. I didn't know if we even. I thought we. I wasn't sure I if we'd actually would. voted. I thought yeah. we tabled that so that we could get the, because um, the 
So with the calendar was updated. Well, the report is different than the plan. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the two, the one That's was right. just what a report of what we did all that all last yes. year, and I think that one was good. So we were going to send that on. Yes. If I remember right, and You're then right. the other thing is the is plan, our... which has all the we're going to do this that with the calendar on it, and then we were going to have some changes because those weren't on the last calendar. So we still need to look over that and approve that one. Okay. So that needs to be brought to be approved. Okay. To us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it should be on next month's agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So just make sure you got Deb's updated calendar. And I did get that updated okay. calendar. Yep. Right. And, and then I, I wanted to follow to up on, on uh, we had talked about maybe getting Mark on a meeting so that we could talk about how we publicize our speakers. And I didn't know if that if he was able to do that or that is still being um, discussed. I brought that up with um, Lisa, and so that and also with um, bringing in city manager to discuss those is those issues as well. Um, he's out of town. He would have been here today yeah. otherwise. So um, yeah, th those both those um, individuals are it's it's in the works to get them to the next meeting. So great. Right. And then I just wanted to have a request that maybe at the next meeting, could we have an agenda item where we even just talk through like the committees since we have new people and, you know, uh, maybe a little more of a planning not, instead of reporting to like, I'm looking at you. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at my co-committee member and we do have yeah. some um, members that are not here today and to, to be able to just regroup and yeah, that would be good. Yeah. That's all I have. I don't know if you have anything. We'll nope. have to pick a time to meet. But. Yes, we will. Right. Well, um, for Rachel and I did meet for the events committee with uh, Fred Edwards. Um, we do have the proposal for Juneteenth. Um, looks like uh, the Juneteenth event, the fourth annual one, is still happening in Fargo, but we were just brainstorming on ways Moorhead could um, collaborate. And Fred had a great idea of having a film festival in Moorhead. So to tie into that, so we're not detracting from Fargo, but we're still participating. And it's just a matter of finding a venue for that. That would be on that Monday, correct, Rachel? Yes, he talked about um, having the event to create the bridge between the two communities. Um, and so he said in conjunction with the Fargo, he wants to bridge it to, f to make it a Fargo Moorhead Juneteenth. Um, he talked about there's going to be a community event on that Saturday. And then he wanted um, the event on the Moorhead side, uh, at possibly here, um, to be the a film festival. And so he also talked about he wanted to also honor, always honor Miss Destiny Holiday. And he talked about presenting um, an award during that film festival um, to, to, to just remember her and the work that she's done in the community, but but he's very excited about bridging the gap there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring back that back to the council and see what we could do to provide resources to see if we can make that happen. Yep, yeah. and that was Fred's question. What what would like what would the city of Moorhead like to contribute to Juneteenth in terms of sponsorship or space? So we'll just have to see. Mm -hmm. Well, and how the city would like to be involved. yeah i guess one thing would be helpful too is if you have an idea do they do a similarly like when we've done a sponsorship at um fm pride uh i can't remember what the amount was but we've we voted on that do you know even do they have a like are do they have a different levels for sponsorships we we can clarify that mm -hmm. um but i don't believe that was mentioned was that mentioned um Rachel, I know that you just list um, City of Fargo as a sponsor, but nothing in terms of amounts. And that's why we were, you know, saying that we wanted to see, you know, yeah. what, what the city would, would do as okay. far as financial, if, if that was an option or not. Yeah. yeah. With the finances, yeah. All right, great. This is great information I can take back to the, the city council and the city manager. Exciting. Yes. So that is the report from the events committee so far, and we will regroup with Fred once we have some information regarding how we can be involved um, as a city of Moorhead. Any other subcommittee information reports? Okay. Um, 
Okay, moving on, reports, announcements, upcoming events. I just wanted to say I got to, the opportunity to, to attend the International Women's Day celebration and uh, Commissioner Stone was one of was the MC and she was fantastic. It was a great event and you were really outstanding. So yes, and uh, all the great speakers and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, any new business? We will adjourn the meeting and thank you. Thank you.